Flexbox is an insanely powerful layout mode in CSS, but only when you really understand how it works can you unlock the true power of Flexbox. My goal for this video is to turn you into a Flexbox wizard by going through 12 different demos that will help you start to harness the power of Flexbox. In each of these 12 demos, I'll unlock a different Flexbox concept to help you wield Flexbox like a pro. If you're ready to stop struggling with Flexbox and start to really understand how it works, this video is for you. In the first demo, we'll look at the difference between a container that's displayed block and a container that is displayed flex. By default, the browser uses the flow layout, which displays things like headings and paragraphs from top to bottom. To unlock the power of Flexbox, all we need to do is change our container from display block to display flex. As soon as we do this, you'll notice that the children line up from left to right. And this is because in Flexbox, the primary axis is horizontal. In fact, everything in Flexbox revolves around the primary axis and an axis that runs perpendicular called the cross axis. You'll also notice that the elements stretch from the top to the bottom of the container. Throughout this video, we'll go through ways you can change all of that and more using different Flexbox properties. Let's move on to the next demo. In this demo, we're looking at how to align the children of a Flexbox container along the primary axis. We do this with the justify content property. Justify content gives us a lot of options. We can align all children to the start with flex start. We can align the children to the end with flex end, center with center, and we can put as much space between them with space between. The last couple of options that CSS gives us here might be a little trickier to understand. The first one is space around, which distributes the leftover space to the left and right of each element evenly. But that's a little bit different than space evenly works, which puts the same amount of space between the elements as it does to the left and right of the container. But what if you're trying to align your Flexbox children on the cross axis or vertically in this case? Flexbox gives us tools to do that as well. And that's what we'll look at in the next demo. In this demo, we'll change our align items property which aligns the Flexbox container children along the cross axis, or vertically in this case. By default, this is set to stretch, but we have some familiar values that you probably saw with justify content. For example, we can align items to flex start to align them to the top of the cross axis, and we can align them to flex end to move them to the bottom of the cross axis. Center also does what you would expect here. It moves our items to the center. If you want the text inside each child to align, you can use align items baseline to line those up with each other. Now align items is great, but it does control all of our items at once. What if we want to individually control Flexbox children along the cross axis? Well, that's what we'll look at in the next demo. If you are learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and beyond, and this video has been helpful for you so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. There's an old legend that says that every time you enjoy a video, but you don't like or subscribe, a kitten dies. I don't know if this is true or not, but I wouldn't take the chance. Either way, on to the next demo. As we look at the fourth demo, what you'll see is that using the align self property, we can individually align every single item on the cross axis. For example, you can see that even though I have all of my other items stretched by default, I can still align a single item to the top of the cross axis, the bottom of the cross axis, center and baseline once again. Okay, so we understand alignment along the primary axis and we understand how to align items along the cross axis, but what about some more complex Flexbox properties? Let's understand how Flexbox sizes children and what properties we can use to control that. To help us understand that, this next demo breaks down the differences between how flow layout treats width and how Flexbox treats width. In a flow layout, the width is static. What that means is if I have a container that has a smaller width and a child that has a larger width, the child is just going to overflow the container. The container is not going to constrain it in any way. But in Flexbox, width is more of a suggestion than a rule. So when I change my container to display flex, even though my child width stays the same, Flexbox then constrains it because by default, Flexbox wants to fit all children inside the flexed container. 
Let's look at another demo to really drive this idea home. In this demo, I'm using flex basis. In Flexbox, flex basis means the same thing as width, unless I change my primary axis direction, which I'll show you how to do in another demo. But as you can see, as I increase my flex basis, it works exactly as you'd expect until there's no space left over. At that point, Flexbox is still trying to fit all children inside the parent container. So it's using the flex basis width as a suggestion and trying to size all children appropriately. Now that we've covered how to set the width of a Flexbox child using flex basis, let's look at another demo that will show us how to expand a child to take up any leftover space. By default, all elements are set to flex grow zero which means they're going to take up as little space as possible. But if we set one of the children to flex grow one, it's going to grow to take up any leftover space. Now that's pretty easy to understand, but let's look at another demo that shows how we can tell each child how much space we want it to take up. In this demo, we've separately set the flex grow property for our first and second child. For the first child, we start with a flex grow value of one. And for the second, we're gonna leave it with a flex grow value of two the entire time. What we'll demonstrate is what happens when we change our flex grow value on the first child and increase it from one all the way up to five. We can think of this as pieces of a pie, where our first child is taking up one out of three total pieces and our second child is taking up two out of three which means that our first child is taking up one third of the space and our second child is taking up two thirds. As I increase the flex grow value of the first child, what you'll notice is that it starts to add pieces to the pie. So when they both have a value of two, they're equal. As I increase to three, it becomes three fifths and two fifths. At four, it takes up four parts versus the two of the other. And at five, it's taking up five sevenths of the space available to it. In this way, we can use FlexGrow to tell each child of our Flex container how much space we want it to take up. So we've covered some different scenarios where we're increasing an element size to take up unused space, but what happens when the container isn't big enough for the elements inside of it? In the next demo, we'll take a look at what happens when we shrink our container and how Flexbox resizes the elements inside. In this demo, what we're doing is we're setting a flex basis for each child, and then we're shrinking the container down to see what happens when the container is too small to hold our elements. Once again, Flexbox takes the width of its children as a suggestion. So even though each of the child elements in this example have a flex basis of 160 pixels, as the container shrinks down to a size too small to hold those, Flexbox adapts by once again using flex basis as a suggestion and shrinking each child down to fit. But what if we want to disallow a specific child from shrinking? In the next demo, we'll look at a property that allows us to do exactly that. In this demo, we're once again shrinking the container, but this time we're setting our first child to flex shrink zero. This stops our flex layout algorithm from shrinking that particular element. The flex box layout algorithm adapts by shrinking our other elements instead. Okay, so justify content is great, but it doesn't allow us to have finite control of the distance between our different elements. We'll cover how to do that in the next demo. In this demo, we're looking at gap, which is a property that we can set on our flex container to give us that finite control of the distance between each of our elements. As you can see from the demo, as we increase the gap, we're increasing that spacing, and as we bring the gap back down, we're decreasing the space between our elements on the primary axis. Now, during this entire video, I've referenced this idea of a primary axis and a cross axis, but we haven't yet covered a property that allows us to change the direction of our primary axis. In the next demo, we'll do exactly that. In this demo, we're looking at what happens when we change the primary axis to go from horizontal to vertical. Now, the great thing about Flexbox is that when we change our flex direction, everything continues to work exactly the same way, only with the axis flipped. When we change the direction of our primary axis, every other rule changes to flow along that primary axis as well. For example, justify content now works vertically and align items now works horizontally. And that's Flexbox in 12 demos. I hope that helps. Here's another video that you can watch. I'll see you in the next video.